Hello, my name is Jason Johnson and thank you for watching. I hope you find my videos helpful and thank you for subscribing to my channel and sharing those videos. If you have any questions or feedback, you can leave a comment below and I'll answer as quick as possible. This video is going to be the Netacad, Cisco Netacad IT Essentials Chapter 13, The IT Professional. So let's take a look here with uh, Chapter 13 is going to cover communication skills in the IT professional, ethical and legal issues in the IT industry, call center technicians, and then we'll have a chapter summary. So communication skills in the IT professional. One of the skills that you're going to need as an IT professional is communication skills and good communication skills. Not just communication skills, but good communication skills. Uh, one of the things that I hear from uh, people in the industry that are hiring is that they want what we call quote-unquote soft skills. They, want, uh, they, they know that they can train the extra uh, whatever needs to be learned from an IT professional uh, because you know IT professionals are smart, they can learn, they know they can teach that. What they don't want to have to spend a lot of time doing is teaching soft skills. So if you can perfect your, or not perfect, but let's just say that if you can have good soft skills, you're going to put yourself above other people in the industry. So you want to make sure that you have good communication skills. You want to establish good um, listening to your customer to understand what the problem is. You want to speak directly with the customer. Don't talk down to the customer. You want to gather information from the customer. Don't make the customer think that it's their fault that anything happened. You just you're just you're fact finding at this point. You want to present yourself professionally. You want to keep your own emotions in check. You remember it's it's you know the user is going to be upset. Their system is down. Things aren't working like they're supposed to. Don't take it personally. Just keep your calm. All you're there to do is investigate and find out what the problem is so that you can fix it. Now, next what we want to do is determine the customer's problem. You want to listen actively to the customer to see what's going on. They're not always going to tell you, hey, my IP is not connecting, or my network cable has become unplugged, or my email um, is not connecting, you know, uh, I've, got a, I've got a virus. The customer's not going to know that. They're just going to describe the problem, and you have to investigate and problem solve. So you don't want to interrupt the customer as they're talking. Don't think that you know the solution before you've heard the customer out because sometimes uh, the customer just wants to talk and tell you what's frustrating them so that they can get the information out. So listen completely to their problems. You want to understand the problem, have some empathy for them, ask to clarify as necessary. If you don't understand what they're trying to explain, just say, I'm not understanding uh, what you're saying. Could you, could you explain a little bit further what's happening? You want to display professional behavior. You want to treat the customer with respect and prompt attention. You want to know the proper procedure to put a customer on hold or transfer a call. You want to be careful about putting customers on hold because that can be frustrating to an end user. And as, as far as transferring as well, you want to make sure that that call gets transferred through. One of the things that um, that's very irritating in, um, in the support industry is when somebody says, okay, well, I need to transfer you somewhere, and they just transfer you, and then your call doesn't go through. You want to make sure that that call does get connected to the other end. And then you also want to explain how you're going to assist the customer. You want to stay focused. You want to keep the communications focused on the customer issues. You want to understand how to deal with different customer types. And then you want to execute proper netiquette or have proper netiquette. You want to practice good netiquette when communicating online with the customer. You don't want to use smiley faces. You don't want to use frowny faces. You don't use emoticons. You know, spell out your emails or your uh, chat um, or your other communications in proper English or in proper language, whatever language you're using. Uh, you want to do that properly so that it's uh, uh, what we call netiquette. And I'm not going to go into details on what netiquette is here, but you can research that. But you want to maintain proper netiquette. You want to have good time and stress management. You want to prioritize your activities by following business policy. You want to compose yourself between customer calls. Sometimes you might need to get up for a few seconds and uh, take, a, take a deep breath. A customer may be angry and they're taking their anger out on you. Even though you had nothing to do with it, you just have to uh, stay calm, stay collected, and then get back to your next call. You want to adjust your workstation to help you do your job, make sure things are within reach. You want to observe service level agreements. So SLAs define an agreement between interested parties. And so let's say that you're working for a company that provides service to another company. And there might be a service level agreement or an SLA that says a phone call has to be answered within a certain amount of time. Uh, that you can't put a customer on hold. That you can't put a customer into voicemail. Uh, that you know a call resolution has to be done within 15 minutes. I'm just using those for examples. Those could be in an SLA. So when dealing with customers, you want to make sure that you observe the content of the SLA and that you're abiding by that. 
And then you want to make sure that management determines the exceptions to the SLA. So then you make sure that you're checking with your management if there are things that are going to go outside that service level agreement. You want to follow, follow good business policies. You want to handle customer calls promptly uh, the, according to the call center activities. And you want to ensure good customer satisfaction. Okay, so let's take a look at ethical and legal issues in the IT industry. One of the things that's going to happen if you're working in IT, you are potentially going to see uh, uh, information that could get you into legal trouble if you if you put it outside the company. Uh, also, there's ethical issues uh, on there. So eth ethics and legal are two different things. Those are two different standards. So you have ethical standards and you have legal standards. And so you want to respect your customers, their equipment, and their in intellectual property. You want to have some legal considerations. For example, don't make any changes to the software or hardware configuration without permission of the customer. Do not access customer user accounts without their permission. You don't want to violate any type of copyright laws with the customer. And you do not want to use the customer's IT resources without permission. Now, when it comes to licensing, personal license is the program usually runs only on one machine. If you have a personal license that you can run it on one machine, an enterprise license means that you can pay for employees to use the software. Open source licensing means that the uh, that allows developers to modify and share the code. Commercial licensing means that the uh, that allows the licensee to make money from the software. And then digital rights management or DRM means that the software is designed to prevent illegal access to digital content and devices or illegal copying. So you want to make sure that you're abiding by the licensing uh, with uh, the software. You don't want to install software that. Uh, take some uh, enterprise license, or let's say that you get a license to install it on five computers and you go ahead and put it on 10 computers. Uh, you don't want to do that. Even if the customer asks you to do that, that's an ethical line at that point and a legal issue for you. So you want to make sure that you are abiding by those, uh, by those standards. Now, on computer forensics, the collection of information uh, is important. Uh, so when you collect and analyze data from computers and related devices, uh, there's two types of data collected. Persistent data, it's usually stored on a drive or preserved when a computer is turned off. Volatile data is lost when the computer is turned off, and that could be such as in RAM. So you want to make sure you collect that data before you turn a computer off. Uh, that includes uh, transit and data that's temporarily stored in RAM and cache and registries. You want to make sure that you retrieve that information or copy that information down before you turn a computer off. Now, cyber law and first response, depending upon the country that you work in, um, IT professionals must understand the responsibility and liability relating to cyber crimes in their country their regions and their states. You need to know your company's policy regarding cyber crimes, and you need to understand how to preserve evidence if illegal activity is discovered. So for example, if you find that someone has copied illegal information onto your system, and I've worked at a company where that's happened before, uh, we found illegal activity happening on our servers from a, from a user, and immediately what we did is we didn't delete anything, we just went to uh, human resources and the legal department and made sure that uh, we were covering everything that we were supposed to before we deleted anything or copied anything or before action was taken. You want to document and have a chain of custody. You always want to document the work that was performed. You want to have a chain of custody that shows how the evidence was collected, who has access to the evidence, and where it was stored. That's going to be important if there's any type of legal proceedings. You want to have that chain of custody. Now with call center technicians, uh, call centers have uh, different levels. Uh, level 1 technicians and level 2 technicians are what we're going to take a look at here. Level 1 technicians at call centers, they're, the call centers are busy and fast paced. They possibly operate 24-7, uh, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. They could be internal to a company or they could be a service to an outside customer. So you could have a company that's servicing another company using uh, call centers. Uh, policies regarding all call priority needs to be set and needs to be adhered to. Uh, uses uh, call centers use support software to manage the job functions, and technicians with different experience levels are in, are, are employed. So the first level people, uh, first level technicians receive the first calls. They identify what's going on, and they may have to escalate it to a level two technician. Uh, call prioritization could be this is a this is a uh, a potential uh, a down would be a level one priority, which means it's the most urgent. So if somebody's down can't work, if there's a hardware issue, that might be a level two or priority two. Software could be a uh, priority two, and then maybe an enhancement or an upgrade request might be a, an, a priority three. So you just need to make sure that those are in place and that you understand those at a call center uh, for different priority levels. Now, level, tech, level one technicians, uh, they gather pertinent information from the customer, name, location, phone number, all of the details of what's happening. They resolve simple issues. Maybe a password just needs to be reset. Uh, maybe somebody's just locked out and they've typed their password in too many times. Uh, they can set things like that. And then the work order uh, is created. 
And then um, the questions that the level one technician should ask the customer, those are set by the uh, customer service center. Uh, so that if uh, it gets to a certain point where the level one realizes they can't not handle that issue, then it gets out escalated on up. Level two technicians probably have some type of remote software capability to assist the uh, solve the uh, assist with and solve the customer issues. They can call the customer back to ask additional questions, and they usually have more knowledge about the technology, and they deal with escalated work orders. Okay, so we have taken a look in this chapter. Uh, we have looked at how to become a successful technician. You need to have good communication skills. You need to conduct your business in a professional and ethical and legal manner. You want to practice good netiquette. You want to comply with SLAs. You want to follow business policies. You want to have good time management. You want to familiarize yourself with cyber laws. And you want to know your responsibility in the fight against cyber crimes. Okay, so this has been Chapter 13, the IT Professional. I hope this video was helpful, and I hope you have a great day.